Hi, um, today I'll be doing the problem two city scheduling. There are two N people a company is planning to interview. The cost of flying the i person to city A is cost of I of zero, and the cost of flying the i person to city B is cost of I of one. So return the minimum cost to fly every person to a city such that exactly N people arrive in each city. So let's look at this input array. Um, so just quickly, the cost, so this is the first person, this is the second person, this is the third person we want to interview, and this is the fourth person. Um, the cost of flying the first person to city A would be $10, and the cost of flying the first person to city B would be $20. Same thing here, so the this would be the second person. Their cost to fly them to city A would be $30, and to fly them to city B would be $200, and so on and so forth for... So that's the basic idea, but we need to make sure when we're trying to minimize our cost that we fly exactly n people in each city. So in this input array, there's exactly four people. So um, 2n is the amount of people we're planning to interview. So in this case, 2n will be four, right? So exactly n people would just be two. So just be 2n divided by two, and in this case, four divided by two is two. So we want two people to be flown to city A, and we want two people to be flown to city B. Um, so that's important to keep in mind. So I'm just going to go over the general idea, and then I'm going to go straight into the code. So I'm going to sort in descending order. Okay, so I'm just going to take the absolute difference and sort from largest potential impact to the company to smallest Im financial impact to the company. So take absolute difference and sort from largest impact to smallest impact. Okay, now this is a really important part. We want to set a cap, right? So there's a cap of how many people we could send to city A and how many people we could send to city B. We don't want to fly more, we don't want to send more than N people to city A or like, you know, we don't want to fly more than N people to city B either. So we need to set a cap. And what that cap would be is just the length of the array, the input array divided by two, right? So oh, the cap per city A and city B is cap equals cost dot length divided by two. So we want to make sure we don't fly more than, um, fly more than n people to either city. Um, we want to fly exactly at the cap, to the cap. So, um, and so like the basic idea of this is if 2n is uh, the amount of people we want to fly for the interview, so that would just be the length of the cost array. Therefore, n will just be the length of the cost array divided by two. So we're going to just set our cap to n. So exactly n people arrive in each city. Okay. So we're also going to have counters to keep track of how many people we fly in each city. And as long as we're below the counter, below the count, the cap, sorry, as long as we're below the cap, we could fly that person to that city. Um, so have counters for each city to keep track of how many people we've flown to that city. And we're going to also have a variable called sum, which is what we're going to return. Um, and when adding to the sum, we pick the city with the lower cost, of course, because we want the minimum cost, right? So by default, we're just going to pick the city with the lower cost, but as long as that city is under the cap. So that's the catch. So when adding to the sum, we pick the city with the lower cost and the catch is as long as that city is under the cap. Okay, so this is super important. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go straight into coding this. So we're gonna sort in descending order. So that's just gonna be cost.sort, a comma b. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm going to create a variable called sum. I'm going to declare cap to be cost.length divided by 2. And now I'm going to create my counters to keep track of how many people are being flown in each city and make sure that it's not going to be more than the cap. So I'm going to call how many people, I'm going to call the counter for city A, just A, and city B, just B. Okay. So now I'm just going to go through the cost array and, you know, uh, sum based on, you know, add to the sum based on which city is cheaper and, of course, if it doesn't exceed the cap. I said the cap, which is just going to be exactly n people. Okay, so I'm just going to loop through it. So the cost of city A, so they said it right here, the cost of city A is i of 0, cost of i of 0, so it would just be this, right, for each person their cost of city A. So let cost of city A to be cost of I of zero. And let cost of city B be cost of I of one. Okay, so we captured the cost. Now, if city A is cheaper, so if sit cost of city A is less than or equal to, cost of city B. Um, and remember also we have to make sure that, you know, we didn't reach the cap, right? So because, you know, if we have exactly n people already in city A, we don't want to fly them to city A anymore. So we have to check that. So if A is less than cap, then as long as it's less than cap, you know, it's the cheaper city, we're less than the cap, let's just fly them there to city A, and then increment the counter, because we want to keep track of how many people we flew there. Um, else, if we reach the cap, if we reach n people, um, sending n people there, um, we're going to fly them to city B, even if city B um, may cost more. Okay. So that's the case if city A is cheaper. So the case if city B is cheaper, um, we're going to first, same thing, check if we're below the cap. And then, you know, if it's cheaper, city B is cheaper, and we're below the cap, we're going to, of course, send them to city B. And then, of course, increment our counter. So we want to just keep track of how many people we flew to that city. Um, and then some same thing. So if I don't send them to city B because I hit that cap, I'm just going to send them to city A even though it's going to be more expensive. And then increment the counter. Oh, okay. Now I'm just going to return the sum. And that's it. Um, I'm going to run this. Hopefully I don't have any spelling errors or something. Okay. Submit. Okay. And just quickly, um, I'm going to go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity of this will be O n log n. You know, um, the most costly thing in, in the time would be sorting it. So that's why it's O n log n. And the space complexity would be O of 1. So it's just going to be constant space. And that's because we just declare these variables. They're con and they're constant. So it's just these variables. Um, so like as the, um, the, the array size increases, the input size of this function increases, um, the space is not going to increase with it. So that's why it's constant space rather than linear space. So just remember that as like the input size increases, does my space increase? No, I'm always just going to have these variables. So that's why it's O of 1 space. Um, yeah, and um, thank you so much for watching.